welcome back to another episode of That's a Wrap. As always, I am Shannon, and I do want to give an update on Manifest Season 4. So, I posted two episodes recently regarding Manifest Season 3 and then what we know about Season 4. And ironically, a few days after I recorded everything and saved all the files, it was announced that Manifest Season 4 would be released on Netflix on November 4th of 2022. So that is the update on Manifest Season 4, if you are not already aware of that announcement. So with that being said, let's go ahead and get into today's episode, which is focused on American Horror Story Season 4 Freak Show. So this season introduces us to Finn Rittrock, whom I fell in love with after watching this season. Um, This was the first season I ever watched of American Horror Story. And while he is attractive, I did not fall in love with him for his looks. I fell in love with his acting ability, which is amazing. And I will give props to every single person that has ever worked on American Horror Story. You have to have an incredible sense of your strengths and weaknesses to work on a series like this. You are constantly playing different characters and even at some points um, the same actor or actress can be portraying multiple characters and it is very it's a very draining process um, and he plays a very dark and twisted soul in this season. So I don't I think I think he did absolutely amazing and that is why I fell in love with him. Um, that being said, since the season of American Horror Story, he has personally gone on to work on some amazing projects. And prior to this season, he was also in Halloween Town High, 12 and ER. This is also going to be the first season that ties in another season. So Asylum, which is season two, gets looped in quite a bit in this season as well. So this season takes place in Jupiter, Florida in the 50s. And the main focus is really the two-headed conjoined twins, Betty and Dot, who get discovered after killing their mother. And as the name of the season suggests, we are met with various freaks. Those with some sort of physical anomalies, which were not anomalies, I've been watching Ghost Adventures too much. Ab- abnormalities. Um, and that being said, um, these people in reality really aren't freaks, but back in the day, that's what they were considered. They were considered freaks. Um, we also get introduced to Twisty the Clown, which is a killer clown. We meet Jimmy, who has schizodactical fully hands um so basically four of his fingers like the two the two two fingers are like conjoined so like the index and the middle finger are conjoined and then the ring finger and the pinky are conjoined um and then we are introduced to his mother ethel who is a bearded lady um so very quickly we end up seeing that jimmy ends up killing a detective who threatens to arrest the twins for the murder of their mother um, due to the detective being killed and missing. Other police show up to search the campgrounds to find the missing detective. They end up arresting this freak named Meep, who is then later killed in a holding cell, and we see the body is thrown from a vehicle at the campsite. And that is when they realized that Meep was murdered while in custody. They also advised the gang um, that there is now a curfew due to the murders being committed from Twisty the Clown and the kidnappings, which they do not know Twisty the Clown is a thing right now. 
Um, we then meet Dell and his wife, who is a triple-breasted, a triple-breasted woman, but also has both male and female parts. And Dell himself is considered to be the strongest man. He is given the role of a security guard, but ends up physically assaulting his son Jimmy. That is right. Dell is Jimmy's father. And Elsa also finds out that Dell is the one who framed Meep for the murder of the detective after Jimmy attempted to frame Dell to get him off of the campsite. Um, we are also previously met by Dandy and his mother. And he wanted to buy the twins at the freak show, but he was denied multiple times. And he returns trying to convince Jimmy to let him join the freak show, believing he himself is a freak. Um, in reality, it is obvious that Dandy has a lot of mental issues. Um, not helped by his overprotective mother. Um, so we actually see that his mother is driving and Twisty the Clown is just roaming the streets. And she kind of stops the car and asks if, you know, he can ride back to her house and hang out and play with her son. Which I, I don't get because he does not look friendly. But, you know, it is what it is. And we see that Dandy is greeted by Twisty the Clown and Dandy goes through Twisty the Clown's bag and it results in Twisty running off. Dandy chasing ap after him and then together they re-kidnap a couple of teenagers who Twisty had previously kidnapped but they had escaped and while they are chasing these individuals we see that Jimmy and Esmeralda are on a date watching this all happen and Jimmy himself ends up getting kidnapped as well. So a little bit about um, Esmeralda. Um, her, her name is really Maggie Esmeralda, um, but she is supposed to be a clairvoyant fortune teller which is why she ends up getting hired onto the crew um however we find out that maggie is a con artist working with this guy named stanley who actually wants to sell the freaks to a museum that specializes in various abnormalities of the human like of, of humans um, we then see that Dandy kills his maid, Dora. So he at first attempted to kill her, um, but she then, like, called him out on it, and it snapped him out of him wanting to kill her. However, he does eventually end up killing her when he puts Twisty the Clown's mask on him. Um. So, we find out also that the freaks do not perform on Halloween because of a superstitious theory surrounding um, an English freak from the 1800s named Mordrake. Um, however, Elsa refuses to believe that superstition and has the freaks play. I mean, she is desperate to make money to have fans and to not disappear in what is now failing for freak shows all across the country. Um, as a result of her practicing on stage, um, so they have not yet performed, but her practicing on stage, uh, Mordrake does appear and he goes around looking for um like this, the saddest freak to join his spiritual group in hell. Um, so we see that Mordrake does talk to various freaks, 
um, you know, Ethel Legla Susie, um, Hall, Elsa. Um, we then see that he talks with Twisty the Clown as well. Um, you know, Mordrake talks to Twisty and listens to his backstory, which is really kind of sad. Um, but as a result of seeing all the pain and grief around Twisty and his story, he kills him. And Twisty is now part of his spiritual group in Helm. And this is when Dandy does take Twisty's mask and where he does put it on and eventually does murder Dora, as I said. Um, the town learns that Twisty is dead. And as a result, the curfew is lifted and many residents that shunned the group before show up to the freak show to thank Jimmy because because of him, he set those kidnapped kids free and you know twisty is now dead so they can go back to normal and you know this is where elsa takes advantage of everything and announces that they're going to put on a show tickets sell out and we are now introduced to stanley who is working with esmeralda um but he he poses as a Hollywood agent to try and convince the freaks and get his hands on them to sell them. So we see that Jimmy finds a drunk Desiree, which is Dahl's wife, the three-breasted, various um, multi- I forget what the word is, but she is a, she, she's the one that has the three breasts and the male and female genitalia. Um, while she's drunk and Jimmy is trying to find Del, Jimmy ends up in a little predicament with Desiree. Um, as a result, she begins bleeding from her down there area. And discovers that she was pregnant and had a miscarriage. Um, this is where the doctor also reveals that she is fully female. She does not have male genitalia. Um, we also find out that Del is gay and has a lover named Andy. The two get into a fight, Del leaves, Dandy finds Andy, and the two go to Twisty's bus. And Dandy ends up killing him. We then see that Dandy's mother covered up for his murder of Dora and receives a call from Dora's daughter. Who wants to speak to her mother, but Gloria lies and tells her that she will not be able to contact her mother for a while. So, you know, curiosity killed the cat. We will get back into that very quickly. Um, but, yeah, we find out that Gloria did indeed cover up for her son yet again. So... We now see Elsa is getting a little bit erotic. She brings out an old sp spinning wheel where you like put somebody on it and you throw knives at it. Um, she really does become insane and learns that the crew is suspicious of her involvement because Betty and Dot disappeared. Um, what ended up happening was Stanley took the twins on a picnic. Um, but she tells everybody that um, she says that she took them to a fitting out of a jealous rage, but brings them to Gloria and Dandy's mansion, and that is why the troop is suspicious with her involvement in the twins' disappearances. 
Um, so this is where Elsa demands that one of the freaks be strapped to the wheel while she does her routine, practicing throwing daggers. This is where Paul volunteers to prevent people from being forced to do it. Um, however, we see that Elsa purposely stabs him in the gut and refuses to have him be seen by a doctor. So he does eventually pass away. Um, this is where we also see that Dot learns that there is a pair of conjoined twins that have been separated successfully for the first time and strongly believes that Dandy could help pay for the surgery because she no longer wants to be tied to Betty. Um, we also see that Stanley is trying to convince Maggie to go ahead and sneak Jimmy off to a barn to kill him so that they can sell his hands. However, she is falling for Jimmy, so she suggests to do Ma Petite instead. And she ends up killing Ma Petite, and Stanley sells her to the museum. Uh, so after the situation with Paul, his girlfriend Penny returns home to tell her father that she is moving out. Um, however, he knocks her out and has his tattoo artist of a friend tattoo her face and give her a forked tongue. You know, basically she wants to join the freaks. She wants to be with freaks. She can be one herself. Um, this is where Ma Petite ends up getting killed. I know I said it already that she ends up getting killed, but she gets killed by Del. Um, Stanley sees that Del is at a gay bar and threatens to out him. And this is how Del ends up sneaking away with Ma Petite and ends up killing her. Um, so we see that the gang is starting to unravel. Um, they find Ma Petite's bloody dress in the woods along with some bones in which the crew believes she was mauled by a wild animal. However, Ethel accuses Elsa of killing Ma Petite. And a flashback reveals that Elsa... Um, was was amputated that's the word was amputated by doing a snuff film um as a result of Ethel accusing Elsa of killing Ma Petite, she prepares to shoot um Ethel prepares to shoot Elsa. However, Elsa then throws a knife into Ethel's head, killing her. With the help of Stanley, they fake Ethel's suicide, which is ironic because she actually found out that she was dying. Anyways, um, so as the troop mur mourns Ethel's death, Jimmy falls into a depression and pushes Maggie away. Um, we now see that Dora's, Do Dora's daughter does eventually visit the mansion to see what is happening with her mother and refuses to leave without seeing her. Gloria then tricks Dandy into visiting a therapist and he becomes enraged when he realizes what's going on and upon returning to the house shoots Gloria in her head and bathes in his mother's blood. We then see after murdering his, his mother, he visits Esmeralda at the freak show for a reading. Maggie assures Dandy that there's going to be some trouble in his future, but he will get through it. 
Um, we then see that he is stopped by Jimmy, who is completely drunk in a morning of losing his mother. And accuses Dandy of having something to do with the twins' disappearance and threatens Dandy. Um, we also see that Dell, who is consumed in guilt, attempts to hang himself, but is, um, unfortunately for him, saved by Desiree. Um, Jimmy shows up at a Tupperware party. I guess that's something that they used to do in the 50s. And while he is leaving, Dandy shows up and murders the whole group of women and ends up framing Jimmy. We also see that Dora's daughter confronts Dandy and says that she has reported her mother missing to the police. Um, and Dandy ends up admitting to his murderous rampage. And he lets Dora's daughter, Regina, escape. However, she soon returns with a detective. We then see that Jimmy goes back to his van and finds the twins waiting for him. And this is where Dot declares her love for Jimmy and says that they can live happily ever after with Betty agreeing. But Jimmy denies it, saying that he's in love with someone else who happens to be Maggie Esmeralda. And then we see police cars show up at the campsite and arrest Jimmy for the murders of that Tupperware party. Um, we also see that Pepper is completely shattered when she finds out that her husband has died in his sleep. And this is so sad. And this is where Asylum gets tied in to Freak Show. And, um, I mean, basically, it just goes in to say that Elsa found Pepper at an orphanage and recruited Ma Petit to act as Pepper's child. And as a result, they later found Salty, who him and Pepper ended up getting married. And we find out that, um, you know, Pepper's life was not all that great. Um, Desiree suggests to Elsa to return Pepper to her older sister. And this is where we find out on her not so happy life um you know she tracks down pepper's sister convinces to take take her in nine years later rita gives birth to a deformed baby her husband convinces convinces her to frame pepper for the baby's murder who was actually killed by rita's husband and this is how pepper is committed into briarcliff and, you know, Pepper finds a magazine with Elsa on the cover. And it is very sad. I'm not going to lie. I cried watching how those times passed in her not-so-happy life. And when you already have watched Asylum, you can't help but feel some sort of emotion. Um, meanwhile... Stanley convinces Elsa to let him take care of Salty's body and cremate him, but instead he chops his head off and sells it to the museum. Yeah, should have known that it was going to be there. Um, so Maggie confesses to Desiree that she and Stanley are con artists, and they visit the museum, and that is where they see Ma Petite's body, Salty's head, and Jimmy's hands on display. Because when he was a when he was arrested, he his hands were yeah. His hands were chopped off. Um, and the reason why his hands were chopped off was because Stanley convinces Jimmy that the only way that they would be able to pay for a lawyer is to take his hands and sell them. So Jimmy free willingly does so. Well, I don't think he I don't think he free willingly does so, but Nonetheless, he wakes up in their all. So we see that Betty and Dot set out to find someone. And while they're traveling, they meet Chester, 
who is performing magic in front of an audience with his dummy named Marjorie. They seduce Chester and sleep with him. Um, we then see that Jimmy is being transported back to prison. Eve throws a brick through the windshield. And she and Dell kill both officers and rescue Jimmy. And also we see that a flashback reveals that Chester's wife Lucy had an affair with a woman named Alice. And in a jealous rage, he murdered the two, believing that Marjorie committed the murders. We then see that Dell is shot in the head from behind from Elsa after he admits to smothering and killing Ma Petit and selling her. Um, Maggie then reveals to Stanley that she outed him as a con artist and a murderer. Stanley pleads with the crew to let him live and tells him that Elsa murdered Ethel in kind of a way to get them off of him. However, they ignore him and mutilate mutilate him to resemble Meek. So the twins infirm Chester, they no longer want to be his assistants. And Maggie volunteers in their place. Chester places her into a box where magicians cut you in half. Um, however, he sees the faces of his deceased wife and lover, and he saws Maggie completely in half without realizing he even killed her. Yep. Crazy people all around. So... We see that Dot and Betty warn Elsa that she needs to leave because the freaks are intending to avenge Ethel's murder in which she, I mean, she killed Ethel. So they are now trying to get back at her. And they find that Elsa is already gone. While she is gone, she meets Dandy and receives $10,000 from Dandy in exchange for the freak show. So she sells the freak show to Dandy. Um, however, in yet another psychotic rage, Dandy massacres the freaks. Jimmy returns and finds everyone but Desiree dead. Dandy ended up kidnapping Bat and Dot, and they agree to marry him. At dinner, Dandy is drugged by Desiree with the help of the twins and Jimmy. Dandy awakens to find himself locked in a water torture cell thing um so they all watch as he drowns elsa arrives in hollywood and meets this guy named i forget what his first name is but his last name's back he's the vice president of casting and they actually get married in 1960 elsa receives a star on the hollywood walk of fame and is confronted by her husband about the copy of the snuff film and that it has resurfaced. And Elsa realizes that her career is nearly over and will be over completely if that snuff film is released. So she agrees to perform on Halloween, knowing that it will summon more Drake. As she performs, Desiree, we see, has a family of her own and is watching the show with Betty and Dot who are pregnant and happily married to Jimmy and that is who they're expecting their child with. Mordrake appears and takes Elsa into the afterlife and when she is taken into the afterlife she is greeted by Ma Petit and all of the deceased freaks including Ethel who welcome her back. So this season had 13 episodes and it originally started airing on October 8th of 2014. So it has been quite a while since it's been released. And this was actually my favorite episode, or not my favorite episode, but my favorite season up until 1984, which I did say that um, when I was discussing my plans for covering American Horror Story. However, watching this, I don't think it's my favorite anymore. 
I honestly struggled watching it and found myself just wanting to watch other seasons. So I am thinking that a few other seasons have booted it out of the number two spot. Um, which is kind of sad because this was the first season that I ever watched and it got me into American Horror Story and it, it held number one for so long. But no, I guess re-watching a lot of the seasons, I guess you just, your opinions change. Because um, I have really struggled with re-watching this for this podcast and... I think it would have been better if it was like the fourth or fifth. Um, But, you know, I honestly thought it was still my number two favorite and it turned out that it wasn't. Um, But I did say that it was my number two, which is why I'm covering it now. Um, But the next episode is definitely going to be focused on what I guess my true number two is now. Um, So with that being said, the cast that was in this season of American Horror Story are... Sarah Paulson, Evan Peters, Francis Conroy, Dennis O'Hare returned, Emma Roberts. Um, like I said, Finn Rittrock was introduced in this season. Kathy Bates did return, as well as Angela Bassett. Jessica Lange also returned. Um, we then see that um, Matt Boomer or Bomber. He returned. I believe he is in another episode, uh, another season, if I'm not mistaken. Um, then we obviously see Lily Robb um, returning as Sister Mary Unis when they bring Asylum into play. Neil Patrick Harris appeared in this season as well. He was the one that played Chester. Um, obviously, Naomi Grossman reprised her role as Pepper. Um, we also see, um, I believe this is the first season that John Carroll Lynch, who plays Twisty the Clown, is introduced. I believe this is the first season that John Carroll Lynch is introduced. Um, Patty LaBelle had a surprise appearance. She's the one that played Dora. Jamie Brewer came back and she played Marjorie. We see Heather Langenkamp from Nightmare on Elm Street. She is featured very briefly in this season as well. And yeah, I am kind of sad that um, this is not one of my favorites anymore. It was a very sad revelation when I was watching it. Um, we also should note that, you know, some of these people are who they actually are. Um, you know, like Ma Petite, she, I'm not even going to try to say her name. Um, however, she, I'm older than her. Um, she is the world's shortest living woman to date at standing over just at just a little over two feet um she is like two feet and three quarters of an inch tall 63 centimeters um and that was part of the reason why she was cast in freak show um she also has a wax statue um rose siggins is actually she portrays Likeless Susie, um, and it's actually a condition that she did suffer from. Um, her legs were severely deformed, and her parents decided to have her legs amputated. She's the only person with her condition, which I'm not even going to try to say because I'm, I'm going to butcher it completely, but it is a medical condition. Um, she is the only one that has that condition that has been able to carry and give birth to a baby who was not disabled themselves. She has two kids. She had a son, Luke, and a daughter. And she did unfortunately die. She passed away due to infection caused by kidney surgery in December of 2015. Um, So she did sadly pass away. 
Um, Matt Frazier, he is, he does have physical deformities as well. I'm not even going to try to try to name them. Um, however, he is disabled as well. And he is the one that played Paul the Illustrated Seal. Uh, there is one more that I did not write down. Um, let me go ahead and try to find that real quick. So the next one that I want to just bring um, recognition to is Ben Wolf. Um, he and he himself um, was diagnosed with pituitary dwarfism. He was four feet and four inches tall as an adult, which you know is not really that short. I'm four eleven, so. Um, he was in season one of American Horror Story as well. So he was in Murder House. Um, he did unfortunately pass away in February of 2015. Um, he was hit by a car while walking across the street and he had a stroke resulting from a head injury that he suffered and he did end up passing away. So there is two cast members of Freak Show that have passed away. And it is very, very sad. Um, but with that being said, that is all I have for this episode of That's a Wrap. Um, I do want to go ahead and just make a very brief announcement. Um, if you have stayed for this whole episode. Um, I know this is not the best episode I've done. Um... Life is just all sorts of crazy right now and not so much in a good way. Um, as I've mentioned before, I do have a YouTube channel in which I post podcast episodes on it as well. And I do have a video uploaded on my YouTube page discussing life updates. So I do have, it, it is a vlog channel. Um, and I just have a playlist where I put my podcasts on. Um, with that being said, I do have a video that is currently available on my YouTube channel. I will go ahead and link it in the show notes. Um, just discussing everything that's going on in my life and why I went from posting two episodes a week to one and why, in my opinion, a couple of them are not my best. Like, this one is not my best. Um, and I feel like Manifest could have been a little bit better. Um, but overall, I do go into detail on what's been going on in my life and where I'm at in life. And, you know, my YouTube channel is kind of all over the place. It always has been. I am a very all over the place type of person. Um, and I personally do struggle with mental health. And it has been a rough couple of months um not that it's anything new in my life but um so yes I will go ahead and link that video in the show notes as well um but that is all I have for this episode um the next episode will be next week I am still going to go ahead and do one episode per week um until further notice um, and definitely go ahead and check out my YouTube video just with life updates um, if, if you're interested. Um, if you're not interested, don't watch it. Um, but it will be linked in the show notes. And I will go ahead and talk to you guys next week. Until then, I hope you have a fantastic week.